Religion had always been important in ancient Rome, as it was in any of the ancient cultures. Before both the Republic or Empire existed, Romans believed in animism, the belief that objects or natural phenomena have spirits. Over time, the Romans would derive three Etruscan gods and worship them on Capitoline Hill as Jupiter, the king of gods, Juno, both his wife and sister, and Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, and Jupiter's daughter. As the Greeks had substantial influence around this time, the Romans would apply some Greek characteristics to their own gods. They would become fallible, capable of love and anger. Ever so, human. There were a number of heruspices, or diviners, who would perform rituals in order to know the outcome of a certain battle, or massive event. According to Suetonius, Spoo Rinna, a reader of animal entrails, was able to predict the assassination of Julius Caesar. A priest, or pontifex, was an honored position, but was attainable by anyone, as a public office. The emperor would come to be known as Pontifex Maximus, the head of the priests. The Roman Empire spread, and more gods would be incorporated into their pantheon. As the Greeks were a prominent Mediterranean civilization in the same region, the Romans would eventually have their own versions of the Greek gods. The preeminent Roman god would be Jupiter, their counterpart for Zeus, although he was a bit more stern. While beginning as a farming god, he became the supreme king of all gods, wielding powerful lightning bolts. He would be revered as Jupiter Optimus Maximus and get his own temple on Capitoline Hill. By his side would be his wife and sister, Juno, the goddess of marriage and childbirth, the counterpart for Hera. Minerva was the third in the Capitoline triad. Starting out as a goddess of education, she would later be adorned with more militaristic qualities and become goddess of military strategy and wisdom. Her Greek counterpart was Athena. Mars, the counterpart of Ares, was also thought to be a major god. Emperor Augustus dedicated a temple to the god of war, and generals would make sacrifices to him before or after major battles. Apollo was a counterpart for Apollo. He was both the Greek and Roman god of poetry, medicine, music, and science. Apollo's sister, Diana, counterpart for the Greek Artemis, was the goddess of the hunt and harvest moon. Venus, the goddess of beauty, was the counterpart of Aphrodite, who was born out of a seashell and helps her son Aeneas during the Trojan War. According to Virgil, he was an ancestor to Romulus and Remus. Thought to be brought to Rome by the Etruscans, Saturn was a god of wealth and agriculture, the counterpart of the Titan Kronos. Romans would celebrate a festival for him in mid to late December, called the Saturnalia. This festival is most likely an influence for the Christian holiday of Christmas. At the Forum Romanum was a hearth, tended to, by the Vestal Virgins. These children of patricians were chosen by the age of six, and by ten, would fully dedicate the next thirty years of life to Vesta, the goddess of family, and the home. She is the counterpart of the Greek Hestia. If any of the Vestal virgins broke her vow of chastity, death would be the penalty. Vestalia would be one of the most important Roman holidays, taking place mid-June. Apart from the main gods, smaller cults, based on lesser gods, would spring up. Liber Pater and Bacchus, the counterpart of Dionysus, was celebrated during the Liberalia, an intoxicating festival of freedom and civil liberties. Over time, other mysterious cults would spring up, like around Sibyl, the fertility goddess, the Egyptian god Serapis, and Isis, as well as the rise of Mithraism, centered on the god Mithras, based on a much older Zoroastrian god. Cults could also be centered around emperors themselves. Barring a few exceptions, emperors were deified after their deaths, and the imperial cult would emerge, worshipping these men as gods, or demigods. This would clash with the monotheistic religions of Judaism and Christianity. 
Judaism was always practiced in the Roman Empire, but was constantly seen as a threat. Not in terms of taking power, but because they would refuse to participate in Roman religious affairs. This would see Jews labeled as scapegoats, and Rome would go to war with them over this, and they would even be expelled. Little did they know, a Jewish sect would be an indirect cause for the demise of Roman religion completely. Christianity would soon emerge, and its initial popularity would make Emperor Nero suspicious. Nero would blame Christians for the great fire of Rome, which would win him the label of Antichrist, most likely along with the number of the beast. Despite persecution and church burnings from Roman emperors, Christianity would spread among the lower classes, and eventually reach the ears of Emperor Constantine. Fortune was with the Christians, as Constantine was open to the religion as his own mother was a Christian. Constantine would also experience a vision of the cross, during the Battle of Milvian Bridge in 312. A year later, with the Edict of Milan, Christianity became a recognized religion. Churches were rebuilt, and after Constantine's death, Christianity would eventually become the official religion of the Roman Empire, basing itself in Rome. Despite this, we still see remnants of the Roman religion today. As the month of June passes us by, and we slog to work on a Tuesday, called Mardi in French, or Martes in Spanish, after Mars. As we look up at that twinkle in the sky, that is the planet Venus, or celebrate our most favorite, or most stressful holiday, each December. Ancient Rome might be gone, but aspects of its religion, are still, all around us. Thanks for watching Made in History. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos.